Children with complex needs like autism, learning disabilities or multiple health issues, they're at higher risk of serious illness, but at the same time, they can be really challenging to assess. And all of these things contribute to the fact that children with complex needs are five times more likely than the rest of the population to die from a treatable condition. To help make sure I do my best possible assessment, I use the TEACH mnemonic, and here it is. T is for time. Allow more time for these consultations and just accept the fact that they might take longer. It may take longer to take a history, not just because of the nature of the information that you have to get, but if there's communication difficulties, it might be a slower process. Often these children can be more challenging to examine. And again, you need to just be patient and allow more time. So remember, you are going to have to let yourself spend more time with these patients to allow for a full history and assessment. E is for environment. Your patient might have some sensory processing needs and there might be some things in the environment that just makes the experience worse for them. So they may not like flashing lights, lots of bleeping or alarms, or lots of voices or loud talking. So have a think and ask about what works for them. And that might be if you've got somewhere more suitable for them to wait in rather than the main waiting room while they're waiting to be seen. Or it may be in the actual room where you're talking to them. Have you got somewhere that's a bit quieter um, and that has less things that, that maybe causes them distress. You can also ask if there's something that will make them feel more secure. So if they've got a favourite toy, a favourite blanket, or they like a particular type of toy to play with, then you can try and make sure that you have this and use whatever it is they brought with them that helps make them feel more secure. So spend some time really thinking about the environment. A is for attitude. Don't make assumptions or judgments about the child's quality of life based on the one time you see them in ED. You might be seeing them at their very worst. You may never see them or get to know them at their very best. So now is not the time to make a judgment about their quality of life. Remember diagnostic overshadowing. What that means is when a child comes with a pre-existing condition, we have a tendency to put all the problems that the child presents with down to that one condition. But of course, it may be something entirely unrelated. So we need to remember to have the attitude of looking beyond what the first diagnosis is or the obvious diagnosis and thinking more broadly about other things that could be contributing to whatever the presentation is. Bear in mind atypical symptoms. So a child with a neuromuscular disorder, for example, might not be able to have an increased respiratory rate in response to a chest infection or might not be able to mount a pyrexia if they've got an infection. So remember that not everything presents typically in these children. Keep an open mind with a view to pain assessment. Pain is often underestimated in children with complex needs. So just because a child can't verbalise, of course, we need to remember that that doesn't mean they are not in pain. So make sure you have a pain assessment that takes into account their developmental stage, parental assessment of pain, as well as whatever information you can get from the patient. The overarching thing about your attitude is to remember to involve the family and to respect the parents. Because the parents of this child with complex needs, they know the child way better than you do. So if there's something you're unsure about, it's fine to say that you don't know and to ask the parents what they think. They'll know all the ins and outs of the child's medical issues, medications and normal behaviours. And also remember that the, these families, they have hospital appointments all the time. They do not want to spend extra time in an emergency department. So the reason they've come to emergency is because they are worried and they feel that something is unusual and needs emergency treatment. So have the attitude of respecting that and taking it seriously. C is for communication. Ensuring good communication when uh, having consultations with children and families with complex needs, it's vital. Don't assume just because the child is non-verbal or might not respond in the way you're expecting that it means that they, can, they can't understand you and there's no point talking to them. So when you are talking to a young person with complex needs, speak slowly, speak clearly and give time, allow appropriate time for them to respond. You can also ask the family and the child what the best way is to communicate with them so that you make sure you're on the right track. Remember about non-verbal communication, so think about how you're using your body language, gestures, look at what kind of methods of communication the young person is using themselves and also look at other communication aids that the child or the family is using. So do they use any adaptive forms of communication? Would pictures, drawings be helpful? 
and would it be helpful to be able to give them something, a resource when they leave the department that, that's easy to read and easy to understand. Having some resources like this prepared in your department already can be really helpful. So some picture books uh, with some easy explanations about the uh, types of procedure that they're going to have or what the process is going to be or a picture of the hospital or the department. Thinking about having a box of these resources in advance can be really helpful for looking after these patients. And if we don't have any of these ready, we can still use body language, verbal gestures to enhance communication. So pointing to a body part when you're talking about it is really helpful. Supporting verbal communication with visual aids is a really great way to improve communication. H is for help. So what help does the patient need from you? But also what help do you need to understand this patient as best as you can and implement the right management plan. Parents are your friends here. They know all about this child. So there may be some soft signs that aren't the usual things that you're asking about vomiting or diarrhea or whatever that we normally ask about. So they might have noticed other things that are unusual, like the child's not eating their favorite meal or not watching the program that they normally watch or not enjoying the toys that they normally enjoy playing with. So these kind of more subtle signs can be really important and that's why we have to ask the parents what their worries are and what they've been seeing at home. If the child's got a hospital passport, this is a great source of information because it will tell you some tips on how best to communicate with the child, on uh, the child's normal functioning, on any medical issues or medications that the child takes and this can really help direct your consultation. And if you're lucky enough to have a learning disability nurse in your hospital, then it's a great time to give them a call. They will likely be able to help advise they may know the patient so use them if you can and if you enjoyed this video you'll enjoy my video on how to make the perfect phone call to your consultant in the middle of the night which you can see here